Hello everyone! I'm really excited to be making this video, which is going to be a walkthrough of the all new Grammarly Go. This is going to be a bit of a first impressions, but also a walkthrough of what I've explored and found so far. Grammarly Go is brand new. I just got access to it, but it is an AI assistant that has been built into Grammarly. Grammarly is a platform that I know and love. I've used it for years. So let's jump into a bit of a review. Keep in mind that I am brand new to this and I am going to be demoing what you can do on a free plan, at least a free plan for right now. With the free plan, you get to use 100 prompts each month. So it'll reset on a monthly basis. And that's what I'm going to be demoing right now. So the first step is that you do need to make sure that you have Grammarly for Chrome installed so you can use it everywhere on on the web, which is what I'm going to be demoing right now. I also actually have Grammarly on my desktop and I'm using a Mac. So right now Grammarly Go also works on the desktop app, which is pretty great. I'm using it in some other applications also, but I'm going to demo first in Gmail because I think there's a lot of use cases right in Gmail. So you'll see now at the bottom right hand corner, there used to just be the Grammarly suggestions and now there's this other icon right here, which is Grammarly Go, but also right within the text. If you highlight things, for example, you're going to now see an option to improve it or to open Grammarly Go and do more. So let's pretend that I'm kind of writing this fake email to myself here. We could open up Grammarly Go over here and it will give you some ideas like write a thank you note, share a company update, respond to a customer complaint. You can open up more to see more options here. But you can also just ask it a prompt of its own, which I'm going to do in a moment. But first, I want to show you that you can set the voice. So you can set it to casual, neutral, or formal. You can set the tone and tell it what language you write in also. So I'm going to just keep it at the neutral voice. And the tone that I like is personable, engaging, and empathetic. That is most like me. So let's go ahead and choose those. And let's tell it to finish writing this email add that I'd love to connect close by saying thank you actually I want to do one more level of complexity add why I'm so passionate about this topic than all the rest let's see what it does okay so the beginning is pretty generic that added level of complexity that I gave it. It can't read the article, so it doesn't know to share more about why I'm deeply passionate about this topic. Maybe I could prompt it more to get it closer. And then actually, this is really nice. It gives me this blank to fill in. It doesn't know why I'm really passionate, but it gives me that sentence structure to be able to add it. And that would give me an opportunity to share a little bit more about why I'm eager to learn more, which would be a really nice addition to this email instead of just asking for something to tell a little bit about myself. So I really like that it's prompting me to do that there. And then it goes into the professional development I would like to connect. And then it gives this little personal bit. I truly believe that. And it gives me again, this opportunity to insert exactly what I want the topic to be there. So this is pretty good. I could, of course, make it more friendly, make it more persuasive, make it more assertive, and it would regenerate something. But I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and insert it. And then I can clean this up. Okay, send that email to myself. <laughs> And then when you receive an email, so I just used Grammarly Go to help me compose an email. But when I reply to an email, I understand that there's supposed to be a quick reply. Now, I don't see that quick reply pulling up for me automatically yet. Here's where Grammarly showed what is launching soon. I don't think that I have access to this yet. So that quick reply right there to reply to an email. Maybe that's not available in a free version or it just hasn't rolled out to my account yet. I'm not really sure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to still open up Grammarly Go. I'm going to just go ahead and ask it to help me respond to this email saying that I'd love to connect. So at this point, I don't know because I haven't tried this before if it's going to pick up the email from before. I have a feeling it's not going to be able to do that, but I could always paste that in. So let's see what it does when I give it this prompt. So this is okay. It's pretty generic. I don't know that it actually 
read the email. I'm gonna go ahead and just insert it though and then I could clean it up. But even though this isn't perfect, it's a great start for me and what I really like is it does really seem to respond to my tone. Like this is the exclamation points that I usually use. It has some of the enthusiasm that I usually use and some of the other AIs that I've been using sound just too formal for my liking and don't really write like I would. So I am appreciating that this sounds a little bit more like my tone. And what I would probably do is I would tweak this email a bit, rewrite it in my own words, and then you can just highlight the whole thing and then you can improve it and then it could give you further suggestions. So that's probably the back and forth that I would do with it a bit. Of course, I have to keep in mind that I only have a hundred of these generations per month, so I do wanna use them a little bit sparingly. Now, you can also use this, of course, on Twitter, it would be an absolutely wonderful place. So when I go to compose a tweet, you can open Grammarly Go right there. I could start writing something, which is probably what I would do and ask it to help me improve it. So let's say that I just write something really, really brief. Let's go ahead and try and improve it first. Nah, that doesn't sound really great. It just kind of used my sentence. So let's say expand on this tweet, add relevant hashtags, share some reasons people should be super excited to get started with Grammarly Go. Let's see what it does. Okay, definitely much expanded. I feel like that's way too long for a tweet. Let's see what happens. Yeah, definitely way too long. So I would need to maybe condense it and I could ask Grammarly to help me to condense it too. But again, we're a little bit limited on how many I have of these a month. So we're gonna just go with that. It's helpful, didn't generate the hashtags that I was thinking of. It has the one Grammarly Go hashtag. I don't see anything about AI or productivity or other hashtags that I would actually want to include in this tweet. But maybe if I had written a better first one and if I kept using this, like make it persuasive, add emojis, I would like to click on all of these things Things, but I don't want to keep using up prompts. So it also works in LinkedIn and other social platforms anywhere really that I'm using Chrome here. Now, if we go to the Grammarly editor itself, by just going to grammarly.com, this is where you're always gonna get the most suggestions. You'll see that Grammarly Go is now in here also. And so that's going to give you more suggestions, like pick out my main point. That could be really helpful in making sure that you're actually getting across the point that you think you are. It will probably summarize what you're thinking. Let's go to more and see what else identify any gaps, give me ideas for improvement, generate ideas for a blog post. I'm sure it would help me write a title. I've left that out right now. I usually do my titles last, they're the hardest thing for me. So I definitely would use AI to help me with that. It's nice that it's just here in the sidebar right here, available to you all the time. And you can still continue to write in your Grammarly editor like you always have if you've been a Grammarly user. And I love using Grammarly to draft blog posts and any writing that I do really. I use Grammarly a lot. Now I will say that I use Grammarly in Google Docs a lot. The AI is not currently in Google Docs. Maybe it'll be coming, it's not there right now. Now quickly before I close this, I just wanna show how Grammarly on desktop works. So here's a desktop app that I use. I use Noteplan to organize my life and to do a lot of writing. So you'll see here if I highlight things, Grammarly Go is actually in here. So even if I have a bunch of text that I've written, I can open up Grammarly Go and I can improve it. I can shorten it. I can clean up notes. I could even maybe paste in a bunch of information and ask it to summarize it for me. So let's try that out. There was recently this Andrew Huberman podcast and I've been wanting to read this article to follow up. And this is already a little bit summarized, but it's also pretty technical. So let's go ahead and just copy this into here and let's see what it does if I ask this to summarize. Let's go ahead and highlight the whole thing. And then if I go down here and I open Grammarly Go, if I start typing summarize, it will auto suggest summarize it, which is what I wanna do. So let's go ahead and do that. And it worked really quickly here. So we can see it took this beginning, it summarizes, what the study was doing. So it does kind of, you know, distill some of the major points that 
we're in this abstract. It's nice to get a nice quick summary. Sometimes actually I like using AI to summarize it first and then I read the summary and then it helps me read the full thing later. This one I didn't need simplified down too much. It was pretty readable as it was and so was the summary that it gave me. But yeah, this could definitely be something nice that I could use so I could insert it. That's something to know is that if I insert it does overwrite what I had before. So I probably would not want to use that insert option. Let's go ahead and undo all that. Instead, I would probably want to put a summary down at the bottom and just copy and paste it myself, just like that. Those are all really nice things to have. And at any point too, you can change your voice if you wanna change it from what you had chosen originally, or if you're writing something more professional and you wanna change that, you can always change the tone there. So I do like that Grammarly has that. So all in all, I'm like, just really happy. I have really liked Grammarly for a long time and I like to just have this at my fingertips. I do look forward to seeing it and how it works in my email to help me respond to emails. You know, I do feel a little bit restricted by this 100. If you have a premium, then you get 500 prompts. Now I do have a premium version of Grammarly, but I have it with an education K-12 license and Grammarly Go is not available for Grammarly for education for K-12 users, only for higher ed users. And I understand why maybe they'll reassess that in the future, figure out a way to roll it out in a way that works for education. But for right now, I signed out of my premium education account and I signed up for a free version with my personal Gmail. And so that's what I'm using with 100 prompts per month. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick review, walk through, see what it's all about. And just remember, as long as you have the Chrome extension, it will work absolutely anywhere that you are, whether you're writing a tweet or you're writing a LinkedIn post, it will be right here too. If you want that, it's there for you on Instagram, whether you're writing a post of your own or you're just replying to a post, definitely on all those socials. I use WordPress for my blogging. It's also available for me there. So pretty much everywhere that I could possibly be, it's there. And because I have the Grammarly desktop app for my Mac, I can use it with the other programs like I have here. And I do really like that I can summarize stuff too. Like that will definitely come in handy in addition to using it for writing and improving my writing. So I hope that you really enjoyed this little preview and overview of Grammarly Go and what's possible. I'm sure at some point I'll do a follow-up as I explore more and do more. All right, bye for now.